Joining us today, we do have uh, Tabraya Shamti. Um, what we're going to do is we'll start with everyone online, and then we'll give opportunity to um, the couple of press in the, in the room to ask a few questions. So for, for those online, please uh, raise your hand um, to indicate if you would like to um, ask a question. Perfect. We're going to start off with Nathan, and then we'll go Amir. Thank you very much, Lucy. How is it, Ashama? Ashama, you've been quite candid on the IG. Um, how has the time away in Kruger been with the team building? And how have the preparations been in the lead-up to the first game? How's it, Nathan? Um, yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, as you guys would have heard and seen, um, we were together as a team in the Kruger National Park, just bonding, and then um, had a great camp after that. So everybody is really pumped up for the series and really excited to just, you know, play some cricket again. Um, and then obviously into my final one. Earlier today we spoke to Trevor Said and he spoke quite highly, highly of the young batters within the Proteus squad. A uh, question for you, uh, what do you make of the Australia squad to make up? Oh, it's like you said, you know, very, very exciting. Um, we don't see them as, you know, junior players or new guys coming into the squad because if you look at the names that have come in, any one of those guys is equally capable of uh, winning a game or two for us single-handedly. So, you know, it's really exciting times for us that we can call upon uh, players of that caliber, even though, you know, they, they're new to the international scene, but we've seen what they've done around the world um, and on the franchise circuit. So, personally as well, very, very excited to see how they go about their business, and we know the, you know, the match-winning capabilities that each of them have. Thanks, yeah, Nathan. I think you missed that part. Um, just the makeup of the Australian squad. Oh, the makeup. Yeah. yeah, look, Australia, it doesn't matter what, what sort of uh, team they put out on paper. It's always a great squad, always a great team. And, you know, as South Africans, we always have, um, you know, nice, intense series against them. So this one's going to be no different. Uh, we're looking forward to the challenge, and, uh, you know, we're definitely up for it. Great. Thanks, Nathan. We're going to go Mia, then Fidoz. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Shamo. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, you just returned quite recently from the Sri Lankan uh, T20 competition uh, where you took 12 wickets in nine matches, I think it was, um, which is obviously a massive confidence boost for you coming into this series. Just talk to us about where your form is at and are you happy with where it is going into this um, into this in series? Yeah, really happy with that. Um, you know, the, a huge credit must go to the management and the coaches and stuff behind the scenes because, you know, we haven't played international cricket for about four months. And that, that's a huge break, you know. That's something unheard of uh, to not have international cricket for that long. But they've been quite active, you know. We've had, a thing about four or five camps behind the scenes just to keep the boys going. And that takes a lot of work to organize. Um, the coaches have been quite active with uh, allowing guys to play in various leagues, you know, because uh, you can train as much as you want, but nothing replaces game time. So for me personally as well, it was really nice to go to Sri Lanka, uh, play a little bit in the subcontinent as well. So yeah, from, from, you know, in terms of being game ready, definitely helps that I've played uh, quite a lot of games in the last month rather than coming fresh, you know, after a four month break. Thanks. Uh, and if I can just follow on from that, you mentioned uh, about playing in the subcontinent. Uh, are there any comparisons that you could draw between the slow pitches that one would find um, in those regions or in those subcontinental countries and uh, Kingsmead? Are you expecting it um, to turn or offer any assistance to the spinners? Um, so we've just got to the stadium now. I haven't had a you know chance to look at the wicket, but you know. Sometimes we turn up at Kingsmead and the wicket turns. Sometimes we turn up here and it's uh, you know nice and bouncy. So either way, it uh, doesn't really matter. You know, it's on the day we have to assess the wicket and, and bowl accordingly. Uh, I suppose that's where experience comes into play and the preparation that we've done. You know, we've we've prepared for all different scenarios. So I think everybody is good to go. Great, thanks. We're going to awesome. go for those. Awesome. Thank you, Lucy Hazel Chama. Uh
Shama, you've spoken a little bit in the past around, you know, your, your own role and, and how difficult it was to kind of get a, a regularity of game time in the South African side. And obviously going to a World Cup in India, um, it looks as though they'll want to take a couple of spinners, but Keshav, we know, is coming back from uh, his injury. Just where do you see your role now and, and how do you see yourself fitting in? Um, I'm actually not too sure of those. Um, obviously, we're going to see um, what happens with the makeup of that squad. But, you know, I just want to say it's a, it's a massive effort that Keshav's put in with his recovery and the way he's, you know, had to do a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, he's been unbelievable with that, um, you know, from what the medical staff said and, and, and you know, the specialists, you know, it it's normally takes about eight or nine months to recover from something like that. So I think a huge credit to him and the medical staff that's helped him to, to recover a lot quicker than expected. So... We're looking forward to having him back on the park and then doing, you know, the magic that he does for us. Thanks for those. Talta, then Ken. Thanks, Lucy. Talta, to Bray. Um, you, you've spoken in the past uh, uh, and, and quite colourfully and memorably about the passion of, of playing for the badge and the team and, and, and those kinds of things. And I thought of that because you're in both squads uh, for, for this, these series against Australia. And it does feel as if these T20s are a bit of a warm-up for the ODIs, which in themselves are a bit of a warm-up for the World Cup. So, you know, where is this series in your mind? How's it, Telford? Um, well, it definitely doesn't feel that for me. And I think the way the coaches have been putting us through our paces, I don't think it feels like that to them either. Um, you know, it's a series against Australia. Uh, we're a very, very good team, and so are we. And, you know, over the years... Um, Playing against Australia has always been one of those series that everybody's up, up for. You know, whether us as a team are in, in a great patch or we're in a bad patch. Whenever the Australians come around, we know everyone's up for it. So uh, that's certainly not the feeling that I get personally from the group or the coaching staff that it's just a warm-up. Um, like I mentioned, you know, the new guys that have come in uh, have potential to win games. You know, it's not, it's not a case of just resting guys and giving guys caps just for the sake of it. Um, so, yeah, I think from our point, uh, from our side, we're definitely here to win the series. And the preparation's shown that. And I don't think we've... Look, we can't ignore the World Cup. Of course, it's a big thing and it's coming up. But it hasn't felt like the T20 series is just, just a warm-up or we just got to get through it. Um, yeah, that's, that's as honestly and as best as I can explain um, what the feeling is in the camp. Thanks, Talta. Keith? Thanks, Lucy. Uh, how's it, Therese? Nice to see you again. Um, Therese, historically, Australia have always been quite aggressive um, in playing against spin. Um, how, how good preparation is this series going to be for uh, the World Cup, where I guess on, on generally, you know, everyone expects it to be pretty flat pitches. So, I mean, I think most teams will try and attack spin there as well, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, any opportunity we get to play, so whether it goes well for you, um, that's just my belief. You know, if it goes well for you, there's a lot of positives you can take from it. And even if it, you know, a game or two doesn't go your way, I think you learn a lot of lessons from that, especially from the bad games. Um, you know, it's it's you pick up on points and mistakes that you've made so that you can ensure that, you know, come the big crunch games in the World Cup, you don't repeat those mistakes. So I think it's a great, great opportunity for us to, to play against a, a good team like Australia, who's going to be challengers at the World Cup, um, to just pick on, on some knowledge, you know, while we're going along the, the way. We've got eight games against them, so that's going to be awesome. And, you know, a South African team, you mentioned that Australians like to play hard. And so do we. So I think that's what brings the best out of uh, both teams, you know, when we play against each other. And it's going to be spicy. It's going to be exciting. And that's the way we like to play our cricket as well. Thanks, Ken. Percival? Thank you so much, Lucy. Good afternoon, Tabriz. I was going to ask you, you reminded me now that um, you guys have lost played international cricket four months ago. Is that a concern heading into the big showpiece? I know your focus is now on this T20 series. But as part of your preparation for the showpiece in India, is that not a concern for you guys? They haven't played in any international cricket so far, so for such a long time. 
Um, I think there's pros and cons to that. As we can see, you know, with Australian guys who have been playing a lot of cricket, they've got a number of guys that, are, that have injury concerns where we don't necessarily have that sort of a, a problem. Um, but having said that, regular game time and especially the intensity of international cricket, um, you know, not having played for a while, could be something like that. But we've been put through our paces, honestly. Um, these dark circles under the eyes, they're not natural. We've been working very hard, uh, a, lot, a lack of sleep and stuff like that. So I think we'll, we'll be good. Um, we've been put through our paces by the coaching staff. So yeah, it might be, you know, we, honestly, I can't say how Wednesday is going to go because we are well prepared. And on the day, it just depends on, you know, how we hit the ground running. But from a prep point of view, there's nothing we can fault. Um, it's just up to us to go out there and do our business. And I'm confident that we will be able to do that, you know, with the work that we've been doing behind the scenes. Thanks. We're going to take two last ones from online, and then we'll uh, take a couple in the, in the floor before we wrap up. Fidoz, in Amir. Uh, Shana, I just want to ask you about this break. I mean, I know you were in Sri Lanka, and obviously there was a lot of other uh, tournaments that, that guys have been playing in. Um, can you just explain how you go about sort of managing, you know, how much you look to play when you know you're going to have so many months off? Or, like, do you spend time maybe working on other things, like whether it's fitness or skills or just what have you been doing? Yeah, so it's a catch-22. Um, you know, obviously with the way the cricket calendar moves now and with international cricket as well, there isn't much time to do those other things, like you mentioned. So that's definitely, like, a welcome, welcome break in that sense. You know, you can focus on things that you possibly cannot focus on because you're playing every third day or every second day. Um, so at the beginning, it's quite nice, but then you start missing it, you know? Um, so in that sense, it's been awesome that, you know, guys have been able to go and play league cricket uh, around the world. And for me personally as well, like I mentioned, it was nice to be able to go to Sri Lanka. Um, you can train as much as you want. It, it can't replicate game time. So. Um, four months is a bit extreme. Uh, it's something that I've never experienced. I'm, I'm sure most of the other guys also haven't experienced. Um, that sort of thing only comes when you have like a long-term injury. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think from that point of view, we struck a good balance because in those long periods where we didn't have any league cricket or international cricket, the coaching staff and the management have, have had all these camps, you know, there was a couple in Durban. There was a couple of camps in Pretoria. So from that point of view, I think the guys got to get away from the game, but also not for an ex extended period of time. Thanks, Fido. Samir? Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, just, uh, Shama, I was listening to some of your responses, and you mentioned quite a few times about the young the younger players who, who have come in and can win games you know when if given the opportunity uh, as one of the more senior uh, members of the group can you give us some insight into your approach in assisting the newer crop of pro tiers who have joined the national setup recently you know given the fact that everybody has their own unique way of imparting knowledge onto the next person thank you yeah absolutely um you know th that that's what comes as part and parcel of, you know, having been around the setup for a little while. Um, your role is not necessarily only on the field. It's also the off the field stuff. So the way I like to go about my business is just encouraging guys and, you know, making sure the change room is happy, cracking a joke or two here and there and making things quite lighthearted. Um, you know, our national team, uh, the environment is awesome in the sense that whether the guys are on their first tour or they've been here for years, everybody has the same voice. Everyone's, you know, open to be themselves. And we actually encourage that. Um, and, you know, over the, over the last week or so when we've got to interact with the new guys, uh, you, you've seen, you know, already within the last few days, they've opened up and they feel very, very comfortable being in the Proteus team. And that's what we want so that they can go out there and do their business. And, you know, I can honestly say that, and I'm sure you guys have seen what those guys have done as well, um, away from the international scene, that any one of them can come and win, win games for us. So it's really exciting for us. And, you know, to be able to have that many players that can win games for you from nowhere, um, that's very exciting. You know, it means that we are never out of the game, no matter what the situation is. And I've said it, I'm super pumped to be back here. You know, I mean, how nice to have a 
press conference for an international game. It's been a long time. Great, thank you. Awesome, thank you. We're going to take one or two from the floor um, as we wrap up. Um, just how vital is it to actually win the series against Australia? I mean, also, will it be a way of uh, determining how, how far your preparations have come leading up to the, to the World Cup? Yeah, look, we don't want to think too far ahead and look at the World Cup because we have eight international games before that, right? Um, we're representing our country. Uh, we're representing the hopes of the people. You know, just because it's a World Cup coming up, I'm sure the people are not going to be happy if we lose eight games in a row. Um, and we're fully aware of that. And as players as well, you know, the World Cup comes when it comes. We have a responsibility to play the next three T20 games, which we badly want to win. There's absolutely no two ways about that. This is not a thing to, ex you know, just not worry about results because the way we've been working, we definitely care about the results and we definitely want to be on the winning side at the end of this. You also mentioned that um, you haven't played a lot of international games, whereas Australia is one country that plays a lot of games. Do you see yourselves coming in as underdogs? No, absolutely not. Why would the South African cricket team be underdogs against anybody? Um, look at the quality in our change room. Look at the quality of players we have. Um, you know, we've rested a few of uh, our senior players, so to speak, and, and mainstay players, yet the guys that have come in are not the weak links, you know? So, no, absolutely not. No matter who the opposition is, um, no matter how good they are, we respect them, but we are not underdogs against any team in the world. Great, gonna take one last question. Uh, Shamsi, this is a year for women, and uh, Cricket South Africa has come up with a game changer to come up with the domestic league for women. Uh, how exciting it is for, for, for you guys to see your counterpart uh, ladies getting the same support that uh, you've been getting for years? Oh, absolutely. Like you said, it's a game changer. Um, you cannot improve if you're not playing cricket, right? So it's amazing to see that, you know, Cricket South Africa has been able to work out something where the ladies get more game time. And, you know, I mentioned a little bit earlier here, whether you play well or things don't go well for you in the game, you're always getting better because even if you don't play well, you take lessons from it. And you can't get that in the nets. Of course, you can get better in the nets, but the more the ladies play, the more they're going to improve, the more they're going to be put under match situations so that one day when they step up and play for our Proteus ladies team, you know, they've, they've got that experience to, to fall back on. So... Honestly, really, really, um, you know, chuffed with, with what Cricket South Africa has been able to do with that. And I hope that it, you know, grows and goes stronger and stronger in the future. Great. Thank you very much. And thanks for those online who have joined us today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with um, Adam Markram. Thanks, guys.